All right, um, good evening. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Friday, March 20th, uh, 2020 meeting of the Fairhaven School Committee. Um, we are being filmed for public access and we are also live uh, via a Zoom meeting that people have dialed into. Um, I'll explain how the meeting's going to run after we do the Pledge of Allegiance. So please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands Again, I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to this uh, meeting of the Fairhaven School Committee. Um, the way this meeting is going to work, we have sent out an agenda. Um, generally speaking, at the beginning of the meeting, we generally have public comments. Um, we are going to allow public comments. We are going to allow questions. Um, however, as the chair, I'm moving that part of the agenda to the end of the meeting. Um, the the goal of this meeting, sorry, I'm admitting people into the meeting here as we go. Um, the goal of this meeting is to provide information on what's happened to date and what is um, coming in the future, the plans that have been executed by our administration, um, and to just answer as many questions as possible. So the reason why I'm gonna hold public comment to the end is because it's my hope that most of your questions will be answered during the course of the meeting itself. But again, like I said, when we get to the end of the meeting, I'm going to allow, um, I will enable people's audio so they can speak. Um, right now, we cannot hear you, um, and we'll be able to hear you when I um, allow you to, when I unmute you. What I will do is I will say your number, your, the last four digits of your phone number, so be paying attention, because I don't know who you are. All I can see is phone numbers. Um, and at that point, you'll be allowed to speak. And I'll give each speaker no more than two minutes, um, just so I can allow um, as many people as, as we need to. We'll see how it goes. Um, this is um, uncharted territory, so I ask for your patience um, during this time. Um, and so we, I know, um, asking Dr. Baldwin, who's with us, um, basically we are adhering to social distancing um, during this meeting, so we are all six feet apart. We do have all six uh, school committee members here, um, and I'll take a roll call in a second, um, so let's do that. Uh, Mr. Boyan. Here. Mrs. Powers. Here. Mrs. Keechler. Here. Uh, Ms. Mrs. McKenna. Here. Ms. Mr. Beach. Here. <laughs> and I am here. Um, we have Dr. Baldwin, our superintendent of schools here, uh, Tara Kohler, our assistant superintendent of schools, um, Nicole Potter, who's our director of um, information technology and finance, and we also have um, assistance here from uh, Fairhaven Cable Access and uh, Fairhaven TV. So um, they're here to enable us to have this meeting and to provide the access uh, remotely. So um, we are not approving any minutes. Um, although it was on the agenda, um, they did not come out as normal. Obviously, it's like I said, since we've had um, this unprecedented situation go on, we're gonna save that for our next meeting. So I am gonna pass over that portion of the agenda. And as I already said, we're going to move um, public comment to the end of, of the meeting. So with that, I think we'll go to um, reports and recommendations of the superintendent. And uh, Dr. Baldwin, I'll let you take Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I just appreciate the community's patience in this unprecedented time. Um, it's been a week. Uh, one week ago, an hour ago, we brought our principals in um, after receiving a lot of information, and I'm going to go through the timeline for the uh, week, and within that, every time there's information that comes up, you'll get that information through the timeline. Uh, one week ago, on Friday, March 13th, uh, at 10 a.m., there was a conference call with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the Department of Public Health. When we got out of that conference call, uh, the DESE correspondence for the coronavirus guidance stated in bold, at this time, the administration is not asking for a statewide closure, but that could change in the future as circumstances change. That was at noon one week ago. What happened from that point on is uh, superintendents across the Commonwealth, and it had happened the night before with many Metro West superintendents who had been uh, parts of the Biogen situation, uh, started to close schools by region. And what was happening was uh, North Shore Superintendents Association were 
coming together and deciding to close schools collectively for the safety of their uh, staff and students in the community. Uh, the exact same thing was happening with the Old Colony Superintendents Association, which ranges in region from Seekonk through Provincetown. And there are about 40 superintendents along many, many communities. And by the afternoon, uh, 24 superintendents had decided from the Old Colony Superintendents Association to do the right thing and either close for one week or two weeks. Uh, we had made a decision, as I said, um, almost to the, to the hour one week ago that we would close schools for one week and we would uh, reevaluate today, March 20th. What happened was we put out correspondence. We informed everyone to treat this week as a snow day week, except for the Friday, because we had only called one school cancellation. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday would get us to our five allotted snow days, and then we would figure out how to deal with the Friday. What then happened was, <clears throat> All day on Sunday, March 15th, uh, many, many phone conversations took place at the state level because uh, basically most, if not all, of the districts around the Commonwealth had decided to close. And for all the right reasons, at that time, Governor Baker uh, got on and decided to suspend educational operations um, from March 17th until April 7th. Basically, what he was doing was saying from Tuesday to Tuesday, March 17th to Tuesday through April 7th to Tuesday, for three weeks, the governor of the Commonwealth was going to suspend all school districts in the, in the Commonwealth. So on Sunday, March 15th, um, we sent out a correspondence to faculty and staff. We were already closed with our parents and our school community, so we knew we did not have to rush on that one. They already knew we weren't having school on Monday. But um, as has been the case throughout this entire process, our goal has been and will always be the safety of our students, faculty, and staff in our community. And we will not uh, divert from that goal one iota. And what we knew we had to do was if we were closing on the Monday and faculty and staff were uh, realizing that they might be out for a while, we know how dedicated they are and we needed to send a directive that for all the right reasons and their safety, our buildings would be alarmed and no one would be allowed in the buildings till at a minimum Tuesday. There was science, and we told them that, there was science based on that, that um, any known virus that is on, on a tabletop or in a building, and at, at that point, and as of this point today, there are no known cases in the town of Fairhaven. However, we wanted to play it safe, is that we wanted our building from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, into Tuesday, to have no one, not one human being, in the building. So we sent a directive to the faculty and staff that the buildings were alarmed and we would start to reopen the buildings again on Tuesday in which our custodial staff would be the only individuals allowed in the building and that would be for the purposes of a deep clean. So we're not talking weeks ago and yet in time it feels that way. We're talking Tuesday of this week. We're talking Sunday night when we gave that directive to our faculty and staff. On Monday, March 16th, um, there was an all call and an email to families and guardians because even though the superintendent of schools had called on a Friday to say we were out until the 20th, we did get a few calls to the administrative center and I will give you the rundown of what we decided to do at that point in time in our building, is that we were getting some calls of confusion and the confusion was that the governor had canceled for three weeks but the superintendent had only officially canceled for one week. Um, I believe that the governor trumps anything that I have to say and um, would supersede anything that the superintendent would say. But again, to allay any confusion, uh, we did put an all call out um, at 845 with a corresponding email to the school community Monday morning to state that we would as well be out for the three week period. Now, I just want to um, confusion wise, I believe the three week period that the governor stated was then pushed back to April 6th. But remember, at the time, he stated three weeks, Tuesday to Tuesday. But right now, um, we would be planning on coming back to school on April 6th. And I will also talk about that as we move a little bit further. At 9 o'clock, um, I was asked to go to a meeting uh, with the town of Fairhaven and their emergency team to discuss if there were any cases in, the, in our community, um, how we were all dealing with this. So in the banquet room of town hall, um, all department heads, police chief, fire chief, uh, health uh, agent, uh, myself, the town administrator, and others uh, convened a meeting and had a discussion on what we were all doing. 
At that time, I explained um, our office on 128 Washington Street really allows social distancing to take place. Um, it's an office in which we each have a, um, a cordoned off office area. And while we might uh, congregate around a copy machine or whatever it may be, um, I gave our employees the opportunity to, if they had to work remotely from home, they could. Uh, but if they, as long as they stayed in their space and as long as they kept their social distance, um, our building would be open. However, we would not be accepting any visitors, again, to keep the um, community and our employees safe, but uh, only by appointment. And I think our first appointment that took place was today at 2.30 um, for the week. But we have been um, in, uh, we've been doing our work this week, but we have absolutely been uh, practicing social distancing and, and getting a lot done. So uh, at 10 a.m. there was a conference call with the Commissioner of Education. He has been completely hands-on. He has been uh, having phone conversations with all superintendents, giving them updates from the state level, um, and even better than that, receiving input from school superintendents about what's happening and what's going on. And then at 2 p.m. on that Monday, um, and this is an access that individuals have right now, we conducted our first Zoom meeting with our executive leadership team. Our executive leadership team is uh, the four individuals in the administrative center, uh, three of which are here uh, at this meeting, Mrs. Diane Sullivan, our director of student services, and our four building principals. So those eight individuals got on a Zoom meeting on Monday at uh, 2 p.m. And basically, we started to talk about something that I'm going to uh, go deeper into, and then Mrs. Kohler will go very deep into uh, from here. I can tell you that um, sleep, and it doesn't matter, it's pretty cool in a way that um, sleep is not an issue right now, uh, because you're so hepped up on what you can do next and what you have to do, you don't feel like it. And um, what's happening was Sunday night, I can tell you that all of our minds were going, and I couldn't wait for the day to start on Monday so we could get some plans going. Uh, when Monday began, we started to talk about resources and enhancement activities. Uh, in case we were out the full three weeks, which we knew we were, what could we do? What could we plan? And the other thing that we had going for us is that we knew that we had those four snow days, that no matter what, um, the first four days of the week were snow days, and uh, they weren't snow days, but they were can school cancellation days, and what we've learned through the years is we've had school cancellation days for a gambit of reasons, not just weather, and this is another new reason. So we knew we had some time, so in using that time, we started to put our brains together, and that might you know, be scary, but we did, and it was, um, it was very interesting. And we unleashed the ideas with our leadership team at 2 p.m. on that Monday. What we said was, we've been in constant contact with the Massachusetts Commissioner of Education and wanted to let um, everybody know that DESE was creating statewide plans in terms of educational resources. And I think Mrs. Kohler will talk deeper into this. This is a crisis. People are nervous. People have anxiety. People are uncertain. We certainly didn't want um, well-intended 40 different educators bombarding parents with a, a, a plethora of lessons for their students day one, day two. Remember, the first four days were snow days. So what we decided was, let's follow the state's lead. The next thing we learned was the state was partnering with WGBH in Boston. And that's Channel 2. That's what I think if anyone who's had children, they know that that's where many of the um, shows that we've watched through the years are on. And WGBH of Boston, within a day or two, and remember this is Monday morning, they were going to put together programming that not only would be on television, but could be online resources for all grade spans. And this would be coordinated by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So it wouldn't be that each system or each teacher was going rogue with what they were trying to do, that there would be consistency from the Commonwealth and their level, and it could be disseminated through WGBH Channel 2 even for those who don't have connectivity, they could go on TV. And, and we have that information today and actually got that out to our, our parents. Um, so with that partnership, they also were looking into L students and the L population and looking at ways of closed captioning, looking at ways of uh, Telemundo and Univision. Uh, a lot of deep thought into how all could mean all throughout the Commonwealth. DESE will be producing a letter uh, that they will share with families as soon as, as it is released and we will forward that. It has not come down from them yet, 
but um, we anticipate it at any time. So it was our objective to be supportive and to get resources to supplement students during this extraordinary and challenging situation. But we were not intending, and we will not intend, to replace the normal school day. Uh, nothing replaces the brick and mortar, uh, the face-to-face, -face, the relationship building that takes place in our schools. But could we set up something to enhance, to support resources for students and families? That was our objective, and that continues to be our objective. And that was set forth in our thoughts on Sunday night and starting to put it into action on Monday and then starting to talk to our principals on uh, Monday afternoon. Our specific plan was to do what we could as best as we possibly could. And what we thought was, let's break this up into units and chunks. Let's not do it so specific and so small. So the idea was to have K through two literacy, which has been a huge initiative of ours, and to have two lead people head that, and then those two lead head people would then converse with others. And we thought about chunking up three to five ELA and three to five math. We talked about chunking up six to eight math, nine to 12 math, six to 12 humanities, which is ELA and social studies, six to 12 science. And then as we started to think more, there's so much more we can do with our exploratories, et cetera. So we were going, we knew we had those four days and the idea was to start to unleash our faculty and staff because it was gonna go beyond those four days and to take those days to plan what we were going to do. Tuesday, March 17th, um, we began with, uh, I began with a, I have a really um, interesting role right now. Um, in May, I'll be the president of the Mass Association of School Superintendents. Uh, that affords me the ability to be in the room uh, where it happens, so to speak, and have input, also hear what's going on. And I think it's been a plus in this situation because um, we've been able to give input from a perspective of a South Coast suburban school district to uh, certain individuals at the state level. Um, while a Weston may be able to do a full-fledged um, online program like a university, um, I said I cannot guarantee that all 2,000 of our students have connectivity, have access, and have the ability to go online to do learning, nor in a time like this would I want that to happen right away. So giving the perspective of reality of our district um, was important. So uh, at 10 o'clock on uh, Tuesday morning, uh, I was in a conference call with the education chairs, Alice Peisch and Jason Lewis, um, providing input and trying to set forth um, some information that you'll be dealing with later. And then at 12 o'clock, I was on a conference call with the Mass Association of School Superintendent Officers with the Commissioner of Education, again, trying to vet what the right thing and the best thing to do is. And by 2 p.m., um, we were having another Zoom meeting with our executive leadership team, and we kept feeding them with information of where we were heading. The information we gave them and then got out, and I think we sent a narrative that said on Friday we'd get back to people, because that's what we knew as of last Friday, and this is the Friday we'd get back to people. We had to keep communicating deeper and further. So what we did was um, sent something to faculty and staff on Tuesday, March 17th. We discussed the calendar. And so this is, as I get to these points in this narrative, I want to stop so everyone understands what I'm talking about with the calendar. The Commissioner of Education set forth regulation when the governor declared a state of emergency that allowed him to change regulation. We have to fulfill 180 days. And the initial language said that um, any days after April 1st or before April 1st would all have to be made up no matter what, with an ending date of June 30th. What the commissioner did based on the governor's decree was went back and said by March 15th, by moving it to March 15th, it set a clear end date to the school year. Your 185th day, and we're all different, when our days were, how many days we had taken, would set a final date, no matter how long we were out, on the 185th day. It would take away the uncertainty of parents saying, are we going on Saturdays? Um, do I have to really compete to count this online learning as a school day? Um, what about April vacation? What the commissioner did by doing this was he put a hard end date no matter how long we're out. Meaning, we may not go 180 days this year. We may go 160. I don't know what the count is at this point in time. But the point is, it allowed districts to 
be concerned about what was most important. Safety first, making decisions about safety first, and then moving from there. And so I will tell you that our last day of school is June 22nd, 2020. And our last day of school for faculty and staff is June 23rd, 2020. There's a caveat to that. The school committee could vote to have school go through June 30th. And I am not speaking for this committee and I think there's so much uncertainty that I think we need to be very clear that we are not looking to um, go to school through April vacation. I will also talk about the realities of what we see moving forward and what we've heard in these inf information sessions. But as of right now, um, it might be safe to come back on April 6th, go to school for two weeks, make sure everything's okay, and then go away for a week. I, people, I, I think their plans may have changed, but life is different. This is um, a one-of-a-kind situation that we've never experienced before, and I think people deserve clarity and direction more than they are worried about 180 days. And I think that's what the commissioner did for us. So as of this point in time, our last school day for students is June 22nd, 2020, and our last day for faculty and staff is June uh, 23rd, 2020, and that means that we wouldn't be going to schools on Saturdays at this point in time, and we wouldn't be going to school on April vacation. So that was the first piece that we communicated to the faculty and staff. Um, I probably didn't communicate it clear enough. I did put in it doing the math and understanding the fluidity of this situation. I am informing you that the 2019-20 school year will not be the traditional 180 days in duration. Based upon the information at hand, the last scheduled day of school for the Maine Public Schools is June 22, 2020. That's what I communicated to faculty and staff on that Tuesday. Nutrition services. I am so proud. Um, and the commissioner keeps saying this across the board, and he's just a, a, a great person and, and sees the real picture. We have a moral imperative to do the right thing here. And um, we do not qualify for having over 50% of our students on free and reduced lunch, which means we will not get reimbursed or would not get reimbursed with the current federal legislation by providing um, lunches and breakfasts to students in need. We did it anyway. One of the first things we decided Monday morning, uh, Mrs. Potter took it right away. Uh, Mrs. Kohler helped. And we announced to our principals that as of Wednesday morning, we would start, and our food service group is amazing. Um, we had a coordinated plan, uh, and I know some places, and I, I, everybody has to do this differently, and I wish them the best, but this was for Fairhaven. And on Wednesday morning, we put it out on Tuesday afternoon that we were doing this. On Wednesday from uh, 11.30 to 1, mm -hmm. 11.30 to 1, we started uh, giving a lunch and a breakfast for the next day. And the numbers that I have um, are 49 on Wednesday, 63 on Thursday, and 54 today. And that means that, and we had our police helping, our school resource, we called in a cafeteria worker to help, we asked some of our crossing guards if they wanted to be there at Route 6 and Cumberland Farms and School Street. We tried to get as many people as we could. What we need to do in this process is we do need to um, track our usage of free and reduced and track our costs. Because right now we're doing this for all the right reasons, for the moral imperative, uh, but right now there's no guarantee we're gonna get any reimbursement whatsoever. I think that's irrelevant, but I still think we need to protect ourselves if that becomes available. The Department of Ed, and again, being in these meetings, we have clearly stated that we're not a district with a 50% threshold. We're a district with a 30% threshold. We would like to be included, please. And that's a federal mandate. So um, individuals would have to make a change at the federal level, and we have people advocating on our behalf. Um, we've also determined, as of this morning, because of a conference call with the commissioner, I believe Mrs. Kohler and um, Mrs. Potter were looking at USDA area eligibility mappers to use census data to qualify a location where they can serve meals. And mm -hmm. Mrs. Kohler, and I, I think I'm gonna give this to the two of you for a second to okay. just give us a story of what happened with nutrition. Sure, um, we were really uh, excited to launch it but didn't know if we'd have eight people come or 80 people come. And 
um, our food service, I can't say enough about Felicia Connolly and her work and her team. Um, but we were able to work with our custodial staff. We made them all wear gloves and masks and practice social distancing. Um, one family could get out at a time um, to go up and get what they wanted for the day. Um, we did track names for the purpose of possible reimbursement. Um, but as of today, with the commissioner's call, when we searched the map, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, the USDA, it does look like Hastings site does qualify, which means there are like daycares and stuff in the area that qualify. So um, we think we will qualify for some reimbursement. Actually, we found that out this afternoon. So that was really good news. So we'll be completing that application next week and working with our um, Department of Ed liaison to uh, get that in the works. So yes, we learned that this afternoon, which was exciting. Mm. So um, we then had a meeting, and, and believe me, we have um, walked the talk with the safety and not letting people in the buildings. Our principals, we again had another Zoom meeting at 2 p.m. They were not allowed uh, to get back into their buildings. Only the custodians were in the buildings. We conducted this outside of the middle school uh, to maintain, again, first and foremost, the safety and well-being of our students, faculty, staff, and our community. That's how we handle things. Uh, they were not allowed back in their buildings. We've been doing everything remotely, and I'll get to that um, in a minute. Thursday, March 19th, um, we then for the first time and i did send a letter to the uh, faculty and staff and i will give a little timeline of this and then um, we'll have to do something procedural and, and take a vote um, over and above teaching and learning safety first nutrition uh, mrs kohler put it very well it was the hierarchy of needs we needed to make sure that everyone was safe first and foremost and everyone continues to be safe Next is how can people be fed that need to be fed? Um, and while we're developing education and protecting our staff and their um, anxiety and uncertainty, remember we had communicated that we were dealing with four days and we were getting ready to plan what would happen on that fifth day, which is today. So with that in mind, we also did a lot of background work um, in these conversations with state leaders getting information, um, talking to, to different people about um, our faculty and staff. How can we keep them working remotely and also um, find a way to maintain, as all the recommendations are coming from across the board, maintain in which um, their pay would be uh, where it is. And there's a lot of information out there in a lot of ways, but we knew that there's a right way to do this and the governing board that makes decision on policy and the only people who can make decision on policy is the school committee. So um, at this point in time, I think it's important that um, we decided to have a school committee meeting. The town canceled their meetings. We decided to have a school committee meeting and put it on the agenda for Wednesday, which was the proper posting, so that we could have this meeting today, so that we could take a couple of official votes, and then, um, from there, get back into a synopsis so we could educate the community on what's happened, but more importantly, what's going to happen and what we're doing. So I believe at this point in time, um, we'll probably move to making a motion and having uh, the chair explain something real quick. Okay, so um, prior to this motion, I'm actually going to recuse myself from this portion of the meeting uh, due to a, a known conflict, and I'm gonna hand the meeting over to uh, Ms. Keechler, So, Mrs. Keechel, before I ask you to read a motion and the committee to take a vote uh, in the affirmative or not, um, this is this has been vetted. Um, we met at 2:30 today with our union FEA president. Um, we have consulted with our town administrator. Uh, the motion is drafted by our legal counsel. Um, we have uh, been in consultation uh, throughout the state in recommendations that are, uh, if they haven't already been set forth, are coming down uh, probably from the state level. This is all in accordance with um, those issues and this is um, in regards to staff work and pay.
So the motion reads, move that during the period starting March 20th, 2020 to April 3rd, 2020, inclusive or to such later date as the governor of Massachusetts may determine for the continued closure of all public schools in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts due to COVID-19 in the 2019-2020 school year, here and after referred to as the closure period. The Fairhaven School Committee, subject to appropriation, shall pay the regular wages for work days during the closure period to each employee of the Fairhaven Public Schools, excluding day substitutes provided that each such employee to be paid performs work they may be requested or required by the employee's supervisor during each work day to be paid in the closure period. Nothing in this motion limits any rights that any employee may have to take vacation, sick, or personal leave during the closure period. So can I have a motion uh, to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. We can go get Mr. Monroe. So I sent um, a, an email last night to faculty and staff. I purposefully sent it on Thursday, knowing that this was the last of the snow days and there was a great deal of uncertainty regarding this situation as they came back on Friday. Um, we said to individuals that we would contact them and give them more information on Friday. And uh, we have sent communication uh, regarding various issues to our faculty and staff um, on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And I will get into in a minute, um, and Mrs. Kohler will get much deeper in a minute, into what happened today with our faculty and staff um, starting to get the job done for our kids already, which is, I gave you the vision that we had Monday morning and wait till you hear what's starting to happen, but with a very uh, measured way in, in doing it. So we get to Friday, March 20th, and which is less than a week since we brought people in at three o'clock and told them what we were going to do, and even less than a week than the governor got up on Sunday. And this morning had a conference call with the Commissioner of Education to receive more updates. And what I wanna do is just give our school community and you uh, some information on some questions that may be out there. Long-term outlook. I do not have the power, and from this point on, this is going to come from the governor or higher powers and whatever happens. Uh, the last power that I had was Friday afternoon to say that we'd be out for a week and that got uh, superseded on Sunday night. This crisis could abate and end on April 3rd and we're back to school on April 6th. Uh, this crisis could um, be extended. And just so information is that um, the current extension could go through April vacation. And I do not have knowledge on any of this. Um, I do have some common sense thoughts that I'll share with you, but please, people that are watching and people that are listening, these, I do not have knowledge on this, but I, let's try and figure this one out. Um, which means that after April vacation, would we come back after that? Would we come back on May 1st? Would we come back on, in other words, that's an extended period of time beyond April 6th. Um, right now, grade three to eight MCAS would be canceled because it's within that time period. Um, and we would have ceremonies to close out the year. There's also a point, and it's happened in some states, where school could be closed for the rest of the year. So those are the three scenarios. April 6th, an extended period of time, through April vacation, into May, or for the rest of the year. I do not have an answer for you. We asked the commissioner this morning that if we were to get an updated piece of information from the governor, please give us a week's lead time. This will also lead into what Mrs. Kohler has been doing, which is so exciting. But So there's the long-term outlook, three options. There's three options with MCAS. Why people in a time like this would worry about MCAS, but people do. So, um, which probably is an answer about MCAS in and of itself. Why mm -hmm. is it such a priority when there are other things that be, should be a priority? The grade 10 ELA MCAS has been postponed at this point in time. It will be rescheduled. 
This window of time that we're out through April 3rd also covers the 3-8 ELA test. Here's the three scenarios with MCAS. There is a possibility that we could move testing windows, which we'd have to do. There's a possibility that we would reduce testing, and there's a possibility that we would suspend testing for the year. If we've come back from this traumatic experience and our concentration is on MCAS testing, I'm not buying it. I have no power or say on this, but if I'm in the room where I do, I'm going to say, let's get our kids back to school if and when we can safely, and let's get relationships with teachers and kids going, and let's get learning going, but let's forego for a year. If we can have no uh, Stanley Cup one year and no World Series one year, I think we can go one year without an MCAS. So that is my editorial, but um, those are the three options regarding MCAS. The 2019-20 calendar. That was not me. I'm sorry. I will just reiterate for those who don't, is that at this point in time, unless this committee chooses to, we will not be having school during April vacation. If this committee felt otherwise, but I think I know you well enough that let's be safe and let's get through this. Um, and let's have people choose their lives and prioritize their calendars and let's, let's give clear direction so people take stress off the table. There's enough stress going on in this issue. Let's give them clear direction. So the direction would be, we come back on April 6th, we have an extended period of time, and these are all decisions the governor of the Commonwealth would make, not this body. So that's on the April vacation thing and the end of the school year. Let me reiterate, June 22nd for uh, students, June 23rd. Um, and then from there, today, we had another Zoom meeting with our executive leadership team. As I said, we met with the president of the FEA and we sit here today. Probably one of the most exciting things that have happened and, and the two people sitting to my left um, have been amazing, amazing this week. And there have been so many people in our district who have stepped up to get things done, including we need to have a, a shout out through this discussion at some point of time of the people in the audience right now. And, and, and I'm gonna have both Mrs. Potter um, and Mrs. Kohler now start to go into detail of some of the things that we have planned or have done or will continue to plan. So, and then we'll come back to other questions that we hope can answer before we go to the open time. So Mrs. Kohler, Mrs. Potter, the floor is yours. Okay. So um, as Dr. Baldwin said, we talked really um, right away about Maslow's first. So when we came in on the 16th, it was, so keep in mind, Dr. Baldwin called school, as you know, on Friday late afternoon on the 13th. Before our first day of missing school at all, the governor then extended that to three weeks. So we knew kind of walking in the door, we had the four snow days to really prioritize what was important to our community. And as you know, um, through what Dr. Baldwin's already shared, we really felt that it was important to make sure that our kids had shelter, our kids had food, um, and that there was safety. We also very quickly learned that the governor was, um, you know, as you know, moving to all takeout, a lot of our parents and families who work in these different um, you know, restaurant venues were all of a sudden unemployed. So we also knew that. So we do anticipate that the food needs are going to continue to increase. So we felt it was a major priority to set that in motion first before we even consider talking about teaching and learning. We did have a document going on in the background. We were dropping every cool resource we could find that would engage and make learning fun for kids. At the same time, we knew everyone's household was being impacted, not just from what it normally is impacted by, but also this new sense of norm for them, whether it was um, loss of a job or a sick family member or whatever. So I wanna just really say that up front because, um, you know, I don't know about you, but with little kids, um, if you get a, a dump of about 40 websites and you're navigating the fact that you don't have a job and you're having to figure out what to do with your kids with those, that information, it looks pretty, but it's not really gonna do anything. So our goal right away has been to focus on the idea of connecting our community. Um, anyone who watches the news today can probably assume that this will go likely longer than the three weeks. Um, I'm not a, I don't have a crystal ball, but that would be my guess. 
Um, so as such, our plan started to kind of shift a little bit. They started to this like immediate plan of the first couple of weeks, those first 11 days that the commissioner, we were with him just on Wednesday before the school closure decision. Um, and at that point, he said he wouldn't go more than 185 and that these days, you know, couldn't be learning actually. He said it can't look like school, quote unquote. It could just be resources to enhance sort of what kids are doing at home. So they were learning to fly the plane as it flew as well. So what happened was on the very first day we were off essentially um, for snow day typically, we had meetings right away. We had already been, and just so you guys know this town, I'm very impressed with just the organization of it. Um, Friday, March 6th, we were actually in a meeting at um, the fire department with the whole emergency management team already talking about this which is kind of amazing, a week before the school closure and sort of this eruption of information, um, the town was already kind of putting things in motion as far as just paying attention. Um, DPH has been great, our lead nurse has been involved in every conference call and briefing us on everything. We were in meetings with her at times and at other times meetings were happening at the same time. Um, she's been great at communicating to us the latest with them. Um, the emergency board of selectmen meeting on that Friday, I feel like this has been two years of um, time actually that's gone on. So we entered that first day and had already talked about these, as Dr. Baldwin was talking about these curriculum groups and these, you know, how are people going to meet? Um, we quickly kind of determined there needed to be a short term plan and a long term plan. So our short term plan, as you know, was to get the food up and running, was to um, have a plan to meet with faculty and staff on the first day they were technically in school again, which was today. So um, we've been having these meetings with the principals nonstop. Um, well, I think we've bonded more through these um, <laughs> these phone calls. I don't. I can't say the word Zoom anymore. I've heard it too many times. But um, we actually used Google. Uh, we were having them try how to use Google Hangouts and things of this nature. Um, but we've really kind of bonded in the last couple of days of focusing on, yes, that's what our kids need. You know, that's what our families need. We need to know that they're okay. We need to see if they need anything. Um, we started there. For today, we knew we had a plan of meeting with our staff. So we had sent them an email um, early in the week, and then we sent them another email yesterday that informed them that today we'd be having this school hangout session. I can't thank the technology staff enough for the work they've done. Um, first, having us already on the Google platform so that we could do a lot of this stuff. Um, but then second, they even arranged for people to get devices so that they could be a part of the staff meeting. Um, during that staff meeting, we had a script. So every principal shared the exact same message. It was informative. It had a lot of what Dr. Baldwin shared at his previous communication, just to reiterate it. Um, but then it went into sort of the nuts and bolts of what now. The what now for the next two weeks that were definitely closed, we are asking um, teachers to give a positive message to their students. It's gonna be either an email or a video. We're encouraging video if they have the capacity to do that at home. And basically so that on a Monday, students will get some positive message from each of their teachers if they have more than one, um, as well as uh, something that will be for each content area, or maybe about an hour a week. So Mr. Muntz is probably going to be making workout videos and these kind of things. So our goal is for them to have this resource available. The trouble with that is you don't know if everybody has the same ability to access that information. So Erin um, Costa, who by the way, thank God we had her position through all this. I've been on the phone with her dictating a letter and then moving on to something else and then it all happens by the end of the day. She um, helped create the survey for our families to fill out. We've had a thousand respondents so far. Our secretaries are now reaching out to the families who didn't fill it out to fill it out for them. Um, so we're really trying to understand what Fairhaven needs and not what every other community is trying to say they're doing. So I just want you to really know that, that we're trying to be supportive of who our kids and our families are and meet them where they are at. It's a tremendously complicated um, situation. Of those families, 99% of them who filled out the survey said email is a really good way to get a hold of them. So the good news is for that percent of families, we know we're going to be able to push out an email on Monday and that their family is going to be able to see what's in that and work on it throughout the week. 
Um, we're essentially giving families about 11 days worth of just staying connected to what they used to do. We really want them to lay eyes on their teachers, be connected. Going back to this whole Maslow's thing, you can't learn until you feel safe. And one of the ways we can help them feel safe is to be connected to their teachers and to hear from them and to know that they matter. So we're literally starting from that level for those two weeks. In the background, we have a website being developed. Erin's um, creating all of the sort of the how it's gonna work and then Tracy Higgins and um, all the supervisors, every supervisor and coach was on another conference call with us this afternoon. They're helping to work on creating the content for that. So our long-term plan is should we go another few weeks or another rest of the year, that families would know here is a landing page on our website, go to the week, go to your content, and you'll see what needs to be done. We're hoping to have more direction at that time. The commissioner did tell us today um, that if it goes longer term, that he would be considering setting hours for school to happen. Um, so we have to wait for information from him. So uh, we have two things happening. One is a short-term connection plan, and one is this long-term week-to-week plan. Um, a few of the people we talked to today in the staff meetings even said that their children's schools were sending boatloads of information and they were just overwhelmed. And these are educators and they were like, I have seen enough of these website dumps and I don't know what's important, I don't know what's not important. So I would like you, I don't know if you can picture it as like um, a syllabus <laughs> or something where you kind of get this weekly view of what um, is happening. We're also very keenly aware that the high school, because it's one-to-one, -one, um, we're assessing, we're having the teachers assess who has connectivity at home. Because if they have connectivity at home, that can look more like school on the long term than maybe some of the others um, might look traditionally. So we're trying to figure that out. The teachers are anticipating sending the correspondence on Monday through Google Classroom so that they can see who has checked in and, and got it. Um, to kind of understand who has that connectivity and who doesn't. Um, I feel like I'm missing a whole bunch. I jotted down a bunch of thoughts. Um, we're also talking about uh, counseling services. I know Chris actually helped us um, think it out through an email, but we're trying to find a way that if this goes long term that our counselors could talk to kids and conduct sessions um, through the telephonically and um, he referenced some sites that would be encrypted that would be safe for us to continue that work. Um, that sun is really something, but <laughs> it's a good reminder, right? The sun will yeah. come out eventually. Yeah. Um, today, the high school, uh, again, we think that the two ends of the spectrum are really where people are going to be most elevated. Um, that being like the little kids who the parents are sort of new to school and want to make sure they don't miss any traction. And then sort of this um, upper end here who like thinks college is coming up soon and doesn't know what's gonna happen. So we're also keenly aware of the needs of, of those two groups and sort of everyone in between. So the high school um, coaches and supervisors and the principal we met today um, just to talk about grading decisions because the commissioner also mentioned that if this goes long term, we can't necessarily still pull traditional grades. So, um, that was something that kind of came up. So we did talk about the concept of credit or no credit. Um, the idea that students can move to the next grade next year if for some reason we can't finish school this year. That we need to have a way to help them finish those credits and to have them have opportunities for credit recovery if they were in bad standing maybe before this started. Um, so we had some really, really great conversation about that. It's funny, my husband has been, um, so I've been trying to work from home these last couple of days, and he's sort of like, here's this stuff happening. He's like, what is going on? And I said, imagine trying to take the structure of school and make it make sense to meet every family like at their house, right? Not knowing what they have, what they don't have, what resources they have, what resources they don't have. So we're even talking about if you say design something we talked about like Lego activities. Well, not everybody has Legos at home. So you can assign some cool ideas, but we have to be open-minded to how they're gonna create those things, you know? So um, that's the stuff we're trying to filter through. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> um, it helped. Only one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we have a lot to do. We're trying to give our staff like a little bit of information at a time. So today they're focused on what's happening on Monday. Um, 
we communicated a letter to families tonight about what's been going on and what the plan is. Um, our number one objective is that all four principals communicate the same message in the same way to all faculty, staff, and families. Um, and we're just meeting nonstop to try to get it right. Uh, we do have uh, Google Forms out for all the staff at each school to submit their questions and thoughts so that we can also vet those during our um, Monday morning meeting, the principals and I. I feel like I missed something. No, you didn't at all. And, and you uh -huh. can't imagine, I, I guess my question to you, uh, playing facilitator here is, tell me about the meetings with staff. Uh, oh, was what, what, what was the mindset, what happened in the meetings with staff? Because sure. they happened today. Right? Yes, so we basically said to everyone, you need to log in at a certain time on a platform you've probably not used much, um, and you're gonna have 50 of you on with your principal to get information. Um, so every principal reported that their meetings went, I know you were in one live, so you could probably speak to it after, but they were just really positive. People were happy to see each other. They were like yelling, hi, you know? And so I think that's the point of our desire to keep people connected. Um, even our long-term plan, I actually miss speaking to this, but we're taught, we already are thinking out, you know, each week having a virtual field trip that, because there's so many out there but to maybe have one be district wide, like it's museum week and you know, elementaries are doing this. And so we're trying to keep our kids community connected as best we can through this time. So that they know that there's other, like they're still important to us in, in the school community. So um, we're even joking about things to engage high school students like TikTok Tuesday, you know, <laughs> uh, but just to like have them see each other's faces and have them remember that we are still part of one big community and someday this will be over and we'll all be back together and hopefully you'll still have been connected in different ways. We're just having to try to think like kids right now. So, <laughs> so what we did Monday morning was they said okay I'm gonna make sure that things are happening and a lot of the stuff that we talked about. Mrs. Potter, anything that has to do with operations, it's your baby, you own it. Mrs. <laughs> Kohler, anything that has to do with teaching and learning, you own it, go. And then what we do and what we've been doing with our principals and our executive leadership team is we bring it all together um, every afternoon. We share everything with each other. And what we're hoping to do is it started small with three people Monday morning, bringing ideas together. And then we found a couple of friends to add to it, on it with the executive leadership team. And then today, we found a whole bunch more friends, well, that's our faculty and staff. So, um, it, you know, the sky's the limit, and yet at the same time, I totally respect people don't need to be bombarded to say, look at what we did. This is not a competition. This is sensitivity to a community, and to say, we are here to support you, we are here to enhance you, we're here to provide you with resources, but we are not here to overwhelm you. So um, we're trying to do it in a very caring manner and just the fact that our faculty and staff can reconnect um, with our kids, we think is gonna make a lot of difference because I don't think everybody's expecting all of that and so um, it's gonna begin Monday and we put some information out to parents today um, so they're aware that something's coming and now what we're doing is there is not a perfect world, folks. Every time you do something, you find out 20 more things. Um, who isn't connected? What do we need to do? How do we get devices? If it's not devices and Wi-Fi, how do we help each and every? It's a, we know we're district about all. So, but the intent is to get there. Um, we have the ways and ideas to try and go slow for two weeks. This is no different than the four days of snow in which you tried to put something out on the Friday, which is today. And now what do we do for two weeks in a smaller version so we can get all the kinks out so we can really rev it up if we're, if we're extended. Mrs. Potter, um, you've been amazing on your end, from nutrition to finance to everything else. How can you share what you've lived in, feels like two years, but one week Friday to Friday? Sure. So I just like to touch base. So we always joke that they are Walt Disney and I'm Roy, the brother of the practicality, like how we're gonna get this done and what are the details. So I just wanna to touch base uh, back to food service, just in the event that- That's um, kinda true. It is yeah, true, because they're like global thinkers and I'm like, okay, we need to do it. So I just wanna to touch base back onto food service, um, just in the event that anybody watching this did not receive the messages. <coughs> Um, about where they can pick up meals and things, but um, meals are being served from 11.30 to 1 at Elizabeth Hastings Middle School Monday through Friday. 
The offerings are um, a variety of sandwiches from ham, turkey, tuna, chicken salad um, with chips and a fruit and milk. Uh, and then you can also get a breakfast for the next day, which includes cereal, yogurt, uh, muffins, milk and a fruit as well. Um, we've had a number of volunteers on social media saying they want to help and they want to donate and things like that, but we're trying to abide by the um, social distancing and we appreciate everybody's help. But at this time, um, I think that we have it covered with our wonderful staff. So um, we are in the process of creating a flyer um, to send out to families and post on social media with um, local restaurants that are also offering free meals. Um, so we're hoping to have that out next week. Um, we've also been in contact with our, our homeless families and sending that um, via mail where we know that they're living so that um, they're accessing that information as well. All of the food service information can be found um, on our website, which is fairhavenps.org. Uh, we'll be updating that regularly, regularly along with social media um, and things like that. So. I just wanted to really make sure that folks understand where to pick up that, um, that food if they're interested. In terms of technology, um, we keep joking that we've crammed a month's work into a week. Um, our staff is amazing. Chris Camara, Steve Rosa, Patrick Alveo, Craig Perry, Jess Illingsworth, and Aaron Costa have, been, have gone above and beyond and um, they've been sanitizing devices all week, getting devices ready in the event we need to deploy them to students who don't have devices. Um, this morning we had staff pick up devices, social distancing, they weren't allowed in the buildings, they were locked in vestibules. That went successfully. Um, so now we're just trying to tr troubleshoot remotely if staff are having issues at home accessing information or accessing the internet. So that's some, some things that we need to work out. Uh, we're also working on putting together a quick guide of internet access options that we know of um, that are in the community with Xfinity and things like that. So we're putting together a punch list of, um, of items that we'll hopefully be sharing next week. Um, the tech department has been very, very busy along with the cable access crew, Derek and Eric here, um, working on the new public meeting protocol. So um, all public meetings, um, will likely be held via Zoom and probably not even meeting in person in the future. So we've really, <laughs> these poor guys, they've been um, <laughs> troubleshooting that all week. And Whitney um, McLee is the conservation agent and Ann O'Brien at uh, Town Hall have been working on the, the new protocol, which can also be found at fairhaven-ma.gov um, for those changes and updates as to what that looks like. Um, as Mrs. Kohler mentioned, we did send out a survey to families assessing their level of need, so we'll be working with families um, based off the results of those. With social media, we're really trying to put out one message um, in a timely manner, but that's informative. So we're not just going to post multiple things a day just because people are anxious and they want the information. We're really trying to have a purposeful message behind it. Um, so when we post something, people, people know that it's true, it's factual, and, and that's the direction that the district is moving in. So um, in terms of custodial services happening in the building, they are working to do a deep clean of all of our buildings. They've made significant progress this week. Um, they have a few key areas to clean, but they are working through that. Um, and just a, a note for you, we did temporarily close our playgrounds at the elementary schools. Uh, that was effective Wednesday. Um, if you do drive by Wood School and you see some work happening to one of them, we're um, using this time to replace a couple of broken pieces. So, um, so that is happening <laughs> right now. Um, we're also working with a translation company to ensure that all of our communication is um, translated to our family's home languages. So um, we know that's important so that we're getting all of the information out to every single one of our community members. Think, you know, so we haven't done much, and um, I, I, my 20-year-old son gave me quite a revelation because he's home, and I guess that's good. Um, and he said, "Dad, uh, the last time this happened, what, what was it like?" I was not around for the Spanish flu in 1918. He thinks I was. 
Uh, so um, <laughs> this is all brand new. All you do is you take it, you process it, you look at your core values, and you say, what's right, what's morally correct, what's the best thing to do for all, um, let's be measured, let's be guarded, let's not knee jerk to uh, two nasty phone calls or one nasty comment. Uh, the silent majority get it and they trust us and we need to do our job and our job is to lead. And leadership doesn't have answers all the time. Uh, leadership uh, takes time. Leadership takes um, the ability to look deep and say, okay, let's do the right thing for all. So there are some issues that I'm going to just bring up briefly that I can honestly tell you I don't have full answers on. And people are nervous about these little things because they concern them. Um, and I get it, but um, I don't have a lot of answers. I'll give you the answers on the ones that I know or option pitch it. Um, and as we hear questions coming up soon, we're gonna hear these questions and not give answers. Um, I think we've given a lot of information, but we're gonna take them down so we can get the right answers. And then we'll know what's out there and so forth. So um, here's, here's what's out there. Advanced placement is on a lot of people's minds. Mrs. Kohler, can you take that for a second? Sure, we're working, uh, we have a meeting scheduled on Monday about AP. Um, right now, we're under the impression through the AP and College Board that they're going to be holding those online. Um, so we have a whole lot to learn about that before we send that messaging out. Um, we are very on top of it. In fact, that was the number one question of our high school educators today. Um, so we'll be working with the AP teachers, um, the College Board, and sort of finding out what next steps are. Obviously, it affects the entire country. Um, as everyone is in a situation like this. So the good news is that we're not in this alone. Um, at the same time, like we heard with MCAS, I'm wondering if it will end up being doable, and if it is, are there other ways we can accomplish it? So right now, we're hearing it's gonna go online, um, but again, we should have more information after Monday. As soon as we know for sure, we're gonna communicate it to our teachers so that they can communicate and build some study sessions with their students. That's sort of our thought right now. So the next one, I'll just, uh, Mr. Mata this morning sent me uh, a menu of the FHS counseling staff and who by each building, and we're talking about uh, school social workers, adjustment counselors, guidance counselors, um, we're talking about um, school psychs, and in nice. doing that, what's okay. that? Can I follow up with that when you're done? Sure. Um, all I'm gonna tell you is their first and foremost priority is the social, social emotional health and well-being. He talked to me this morning about, they're already looking about ways to engage and deal with anxiety and deal with parents and just be all encompassing for everyone. So they have their play and say in this and then how they can, be re, how they can either reach out or be available to parents um, for other questions beyond the social emotional health and well-being. So the counseling staff is starting to rev up and get active here um, as well. Um, again, starting with the hierarchy of needs, but then what are those needs that individual families call about and be responsive to them. So, so we asked him to also build um, some resources to go on the website as well. So when they go into the um, COVID-19 sort of side of our page, um, our plan is to have the resources there for parents and kids for how to kind of manage stress and anxiety through this time and then also wraparound services if they need a, a food pantry or anything like that. So people who might normally have not utilized some of those resources who find themselves needing it, we're gonna have a tab there and that we have Bob Mata and his team working on. So activities such as the drama production, uh, athletics, spring athletics, um, my heart breaks because I know um, that's what people get so excited for each year. We don't have an answer on that. Um, right now, the MIA has officially pushed everything back to March 30th. That's the official word on that at this point in time. Um, there are no other answers. I would say that um, I think it's important for parents to understand that this is not spring break in Florida. And while kids in the community are going to say, let's have a captain's lacrosse practice, let's have a, uh, a baseball hitting clinic, that is not what should be happening right now. Um, we are trying to, this is, these are unique times that are calling for unique measures. Um, you know, me going for a walk and back by myself, keeping distance from everyone is one thing, uh, but um, 
trying to do things all well intended are not. Is there a question on this one? Um, so just to clarify, the MIA originally said March 30th, they've now pushed it to April 27th. Okay. Just to clarify. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so the the prognosis again, we're it, it, hearing that and reading tea leaves means that um, again, take the stress of April vacation off your plates, folks. It, it's pretty clear that um, we're, while we're officially out three weeks, uh, I would be floored if all of a sudden on April sixth we were back and it was business as usual. If all of a sudden the MIA has decided it's deep into April as opposed to the March date. Um, high school seniors. So first and foremost, it's credit recovery. It's um, those meeting competency determination. Because our high school does such a great job, there's not one senior who needs the MCAS in their senior year to pass to graduate, which is huge because there are communities that aren't in that place. Um, I don't have any answers on um, what's going on with graduation and junior day, et cetera. Uh, let's just be patient, let's be optimistic. Our first goal, first and foremost, is to matriculate people and to uh, get those counselors to contact families and kids who need credit recovery and make sure that they get the credits they need so they can be in line to graduate. I did have a conversation, we have not put anything out there, but there was a clear break, just so you're aware, um, there are three trimesters at the elementary level. We completed two full trimesters. So you could theoretically say, okay, we have two clear trimesters at an elementary level, but quite honestly, the, the permanent record doesn't start going until the high school level. The high school and middle school have been through two and one half uh, terms. So they just did progress reports for the half of the third term. So there are cutoff points if we had to, but those are on our radar screen. But again, there are no clear answers. Some will be given by those above us in situations like this, but I just want people to know they're on our radar screen. Um, athletics, medicine. There are families that might have medicine in buildings that they need them. We will make plans of a safe manner in which to get <clears throat> medical supplies or medicine to the families that need them. We will utilize our nurses for that. Um, there are many others that I could go on and on about, but uh, right now, th there's one even practical for you. You have to do a motion that in these times, you are allowed to have one member sign off. So I don't know if we want to segue to that this minute as well. Um, so for, for Massachusetts uh, law, um, this is basically, I'll just read this, what's underlined here, just so everyone understands what we're talking about. But this is, um, uh, Title 7, Chapter 41, Section 46, which covers warrants for payment of bills. Um, one of the responsibilities of the school committee is all of us sign the warrants in order for the district to pay its bills. Um, this is the Board of Selectmen and any other board or committee consisting of more than one member authorized to expend money may designate any one of its members to approve all bills, drafts, orders, and payrolls. Provided, however, that the member shall make available to the board, committee, or other department head at the first meeting following such action a record of such actions. This provision shall not limit the responsibility of each member of the board in the event of a non-compliance with this section. Such approval shall be given only after an examination to determine that the charges are correct and that the goods, materials, or services charged for were ordered and that such goods and materials were delivered and that the services were actually rendered to or for the town as the case may be, provided, however, that such approval may be given to any bill received from a state agency for the town share of the cost of a federal urban planning assistance program established under the provisions of section 701 of public law 83-560 as amended before any goods, materials, or services ordered or to be ordered under such a program have been delivered or actually rendered as the case may be. Um, so given the unprecedented times that we're in, um, we, um, our next meeting may be done without anybody present physically. Uh, we may be all on the phone. Um, so we will not be able to sign the warrants as we normally do. Um, therefore, given that it includes payroll, um, I'd like to make a motion that this body um, 
uh, appoint Ms. Pamela Keechler as our designated signee. So she will sign all of the warrants and payroll <coughs> until um, this uh, crisis is over. Can I have a motion? No, no, can I have someone make a motion? <laughs> so, can I have a motion? Second. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. All right, Dr. Baldwin. Mr. Chair, I, I think, um, you know, I, I, just briefly about uh, special needs and student services. Um, our, our special needs and student service teachers were in these meetings today. I talked to Mrs. Sullivan. Um, there are plans being set forth uh, as well there. Uh, regarding day and residential schools, they make their own decisions. Those are not decisions that we make. Um, when school is not in session, um, we're not required to have uh, related services, but we are looking at ways that we can provide as much as we possibly can. Um, team meeting guidelines do allow for them to happen virtually. Uh, and SPED uh, directors are meeting with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed on Tuesday, and they'll be putting out a frequently asked uh, question uh, piece for not only SPED directors, but for special needs parents. Um, and the last thing before I kick it over is, it, it's about equity. It's about districts that can, and, and so we're trying to be sensitive to all of our kids here in this district, um, and not, come out and say that we're offering school. Um, we're offering the resources and the enhancement that we can, um, but to try and say that we're offering online courses like uh, you know, Harvard or UMass Amherst, we're not doing that. Um, but we are gonna do the best, and, and I, nor do I think we should be doing that, but we're doing the best that we can in the times that we have um, so that we can get our kids uh, back as, as quick as they can and that's something that we won't have the determination of but we're going to continue to work on behalf of our kids and our community with the number one priority is to keep them safe that's that um, well thank you very much for that um, extremely informative brief um, it's uh it's quite a mountain that's you guys have been climbing and um, i can say I think I speak for all of us when I say that, um, you know, in the community, greater community, that we're very appreciative of the work that's being done. Um, and just, you know, ask that you continue to uh, knock down walls and, and do what you're doing. And, and you, I mean, you're, uh, you're doing God's work. So thank you very much for, uh, for everything that you guys have done to date um, in these unprecedented times. Um, our next meeting is going to be April 8th, um, 2020. The logistics of that meeting, I think, are still up in the air. We have a few weeks uh, before that happens. Um, one thing we will have to discuss is we do have to hold a public, bu public budget hearing at some point. Um, and I imagine given, I think this is, so far I can see all the people that are, that are logged into this meeting and um, we're gonna, well, we will get to our public comment portion, but I think this has gone very well. Um, so I feel comfortable in that we, we can have that hearing um, remotely if we need to, and people will be able to participate mm -hmm. if they want to. Um, so we'll, we'll be in discussions about that. I don't, I'm not saying we're gonna have it on April 8th. I think that's something where we'll have to figure that out and it's a possibility. Um, so with that, I think now I'm going to move into the public comment portion of the meeting. Um, as I said, um, the description, Per my discretion, I'm going to allow those who are um, going to go down the list. There are essentially 20 people on the call. Um, if you don't want to ask a question, that's fine. When I call, I'm going to give the last four digits of your phone number so everyone doesn't have your number on the call. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I will give you, you can ask a question. Um, I am not going to guarantee we're going to have the answer to your question. Um, so do not expect that we will provide you with the answers today. Um, if it's an easy question, maybe we will, um, but I'm not gonna um, promise anything. But we will, um, all of these things will be provided over time. I ask that you be respectful. Um, as normal, this is a very difficult time for everyone. Um, so I ask that you be respectful and you be patient um, with the answers that are given. And um, I'm going to give everyone two minutes um, and so when I do uh, recognize your phone number, I ask that you give your name and your address. 
Um, so identify yourself and where you are from and where you live um, so we know who we're talking to. Um, so let's, we're going to see how this goes and, and hopefully it will be orderly and um, <laughs> we can get through this unharmed. Um, so the first, I'm just going to go right down the list. This is not an order of priority. I have no idea who you are. This is like calling into a radio show. <laughs> um, so, um, so the number, the first number on my list is actually I'll give the last five digits. It's zero four five eight eight. So again, it's zero four five eight eight. I'm about to unmute you. So you are now unmuted, caller zero four five eight eight. So what is your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Drew Otto. Uh, Sixty United Street, New Bedford, Mass. I don't actually have a question. I just want to listen to the conversation. <laughs> Uh, I just want to thank you for all the hard work that you're putting in on this. This is uh, so it's quite a moment, and you guys are doing great. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Furtado. We, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you again in, in the near future. <laughs> we stay can't safe. wait to get back. <laughs> stay safe. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next caller. Um, the, la the number is 75354. So again, I'm about to unmute 75354. Um, name and address, please. Seven five three five four. We assume no question. All right. So going once. So I'm assuming no question there. I'm gonna go on to the next caller. Um, this is seven six five five three. So again, seven six five five three. Do you have a question? And if so, what's your name and address? No, I have no question. Michelle Souza, Jameson Street, Behaven, just very proud to be able to work in this district and everything you guys are doing for the kids and us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, Thank hope you. To see you again soon. Stay safe. I oh, can't wait to get back. <laughs> okay, moving to the next caller. Um, it is 80757. 80757. You're unmuted. Um, if you have a question, what's your name and address? I do not have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, one three three seven two. I unmuted one three three seven two. So if you have a question, what's your name and address? Um, no question. Sasha Bosley, two forty two Ames Street. Just want to thank everybody. So no question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Stay safe. Okay. Um, oh. There we go. <laughs> the next one is. Five five two three three. So I'm unmuting five five two three three. So if you have a question, what's your name and address? Uh, this is Scott Francis, uh, sixteen Bray Road, FEA president. And uh, no questions. Just uh, as uh, Dr. Baldwin already mentioned, I met with uh, with uh, him, Mrs. Kohler, and Ms. Potter today. Uh, everything uh, went smooth and how the information was distributed today was fantastic. And, uh, again, I think you have a few other people on the phone wishing to thank you all for your hard work and dedication to the district. And uh, I would like to express that on behalf of every member that couldn't make the phone call. So. Thank you, Mr. Francis. And um, we look forward to, to continuing to, to working with you in a, in a no, under normal circumstances. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Uh, to you and yours, please stay safe and um, and thanks for your assistance and your cooperation on all of this. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. I think I did the wrong one there. Wait a minute, where'd you go? Okay, got it. Sorry. Okay, next one is 050450. Oh no, did I already do that? I think I already did that one, didn't I? Yes, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Sorry. No, it changed. The fact the list, you remember though. that. Is I, you know what? I thought if I went down the list, it would, um, it would, it wouldn't change. It seems like it changed the order. All right. Well, I'm gonna, like I said, this is uncharted territory. So um, I already did zero four five eight eight, right? Yes. Yeah. And I did eight zero seven five seven. Yes. Right. Are you? Are you? You're right. I have them down. So oh, perfect. Them. All right. So what? Let's just. I do a lot of raffles, and I want. So to let's just review. <laughs> I apologize, guys. I'm, this is the first time I've done this, so you know, like I said, bear with me, patience. So let's just go down. You tell me if I already hit it. Yeah. Three, th one, three, three, seven, two. Yes. Okay. Um, five, five, two, three, three. Yes. That's what we just did. 
Um, seven five three five four. Yes. Seven six five five three. Yes. Okay. Zero four five eight eight. Yes. Yep. Eight zero seven five seven. Yes. Okay. Nine three two five seven. No. All right. So that's the next one then. Thank you, Dr. Baldwin. Um, so nine three two five seven. I'm about to unmute you. It, um, Nine three two five seven. If you have questions, what's your name and address? Uh, Amber Roderick and Forty Four Evil Blay, and I don't have any questions either. I was just wanting to listen in since everything was so unsure and everything was made very clear. So thank you guys for everything that you're doing. Awesome. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Okay. Um, and then. So nine three six six six. No. Okay. So nine. Oh, we just must change the order. Again. Oh, that's because someone dropped off. That's why. So it's all right. I think they just dropped off actually. <laughs> all right. So I did nine three two five seven. So six three three four one. We did. We did right. Six three three four one. Doctor Ball. Six three three four one. Six three three four one. We have not done. All right. So I'm gonna unmute six three three four one. So, um, 63341, if, uh, if you have questions, what's your name and address, please? Sure, my name is Carol Tynan, and I'm on 10 Green Street in Fairhaven. I'm just calling to be kept up to date on what's going on, and uh, thank you for all you're doing, and I just look forward to, um, you know, smooth transitions as we go forward in unknown waters, but thank you. Thank you, thank you Mrs. Tynan, and uh, you and yours, please stay safe. All right, um, nine, seven, five, six, eight. We have not done, I don't believe. Nine, seven, no, we have not. All right, so nine, seven, five, six, eight. I am on here. Um, Hi, this is Renee Bradshaw, 6 Almy Street, with her daughter, Arden Bradshaw. <laughs> We're just calling in to say thank you for all you do. And as a parent and a teacher in the district, I know this is very difficult, and we're grateful for um, what you're doing for us. We really appreciate that. Thank you, Mrs. Bradshaw. And hi, Arden. And, uh, hope to Arden, see you. <laughs> Rose, and hi. He said Arden left the room. Hope to see you on the softball field soon, Arden. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks. Bye now. All right, um, 55157. 55157 is not. Okay, so I have unmuted 55157. Um, if you have a question, name and address, please. Hi, it's Paula Jardin, 16 Holly Avenue, Cushnet. I call to listen in and to say thank you. Especially now, I have an assignment, and I am so <laughs> grateful to be working and doing something productive. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Jardin. Thank you, Mrs. Jardin, and um, thank you for for yeah, thank you for um, jumping on that. I appreciate it, and stay safe. Thank you. Now, was it 97568 you did, right? Uh, 97568 is done, correct. Okay, so 19040. Zero uh, no. Okay, so 19040, if you have a question, name and address, please. Hi, uh, Monica Landon, 20 Roundsville Street, New Bedford. Uh, no questions, just listening in, and also thank you for just taking the time to do what is needed for our kids in our district. Awesome, thank you, Mrs. Landis. Stay safe. Thanks. All right. Um, and then eight one two three seven. No. Okay. No. All right. So, oops. That was. I think they just dropped off. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I think we hit everybody. Okay. I, um, I I hope. Do should I reveal? I don't know. Maybe we do. All right, look, Bob. I'm Dr. You have thirteen. People, we're 13 down, numbers. We're down to 13, so let's go through real quick. I just want to make People sure I, I just want to make sure I, what happened? No, you, yeah, so I want to, I want to just go down to be real quick. I just want to make sure I got everybody, that's all. All right, so 55157 we did, right? Yes, Okay, yep, 04588 we did, 75354. Yes. 76553. Yes. 80757. Yes. 13372. Bingo. We didn't do that one? No, we did. Oh, all right. Oh my god. Don't change your Don't change the tone. All right, 55233. Yes. All right, um, 93257. Yes. Okay, um, and uh, 63341. 
Yes. Hit. Okay, and then 97568? Yes. And then 19040? Yes. All right, we got everybody. All right, excellent. All right, so I'm just gonna hit mute all just in case. <laughs> I think I muted everybody. Can we get can we get you two? We can turn the show yeah. No, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> our our um, they've been amazing. Yes. That's yeah. amazing that yeah. we just did that. Yeah. I think, that was thank great. you guys. So really? I'd like I think I believe everyone's questions were answered. I hope. Um, I'd like to give this I would like to give you guys your gear. Mm -hmm. I appreciate everyone coming. I'd like to just give you an opportunity to say whatever you need to say, and, and so Mr. Boyd, I'll, I'll go with you first. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I think it was very informative and a lot of great information, and I think especially during these times, especially at uncharted waters, and I think a lot of people are very anxious and don't know what to expect for the future. And, you know, for me, especially I've been relying a lot on faith and, you know, with my church, and I think part of scripture that I like really, that stands out to me a lot is be still. And I think that's what all of us need to focus on, whether you're religious or you don't believe in God, but you just want to give good thoughts. I think all of us need to give good thoughts for everyone. And I think even for me, like just praying for people, especially our leaders, whether it's all of us or even our federal government and our state officials, I think being still and just relying on the process is something that all of us need to try to do, especially for our kids. So I think that's something that I've been trying to do a lot during these moments is to be still and to just focus on the present moment and to just trust the process and we'll get through it. I, I have faith in all three of you here, our leaders, and especially, I mean, our TV crew, you guys have been awesome. Mm -hmm. I, the first time doing the public comment, I was amazed just how fascinating technology is and our internet and innovation. So, You're the young guy. Yeah, no, and I'm the young guy, I know. <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you for just your leadership and promo promoting what's best for our district and our kids. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a stressful time, you know, for, for parents, and I know you recognize that, and I really appreciate the the hard work you're doing to try to make it less stressful <laughs> uh, because it is, um, and it's, you know, it's stressful for everyone. I mean, everyone is, is very fearful and, um, and, you know, to see steady leadership is, is calming. Um, and if, you know, if we can provide that and you can provide that, then I'm really happy that, that we are, we're doing that as a district. Um, I got two emails this afternoon, right before I came, from uh, the middle school and the high school, very um, commonly worded and um, with some guidance. And so it's already started, um, and I think that's great. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, parents I, uh, are, are going to start, you know, using some of that. Um, I've personally have tried to keep my kids not focused too much on school yet. I read something about, you know, let's not make it traumatic. Let's um, try to ease, ease them through this because it could easily get there. So I really want to be as conscious of that as possible. Um, kids are missing each other already. Uh, it's not like vacation. <laughs> They're not uh, able to see each other. Um, and. I got to say, from TJ teenager's point of view, it's all of our fault. It's, the, <laughs> it's every adult in the world, it's our fault. So um, we need to fix it. <laughs> or we'll have a lot of teenagers really coming for us. So <laughs> we'll be, uh, yeah. But I'm really happy that uh, we're, we're able to do some things. Um, and then if, if uh, keeping that in mind that they're missing each other, even though they're connecting this way, they really do, uh, at least from what I see, have an impact of seeing each other and, and having that camaraderie of a classroom. Mm -hmm. So if there's any way we can do some Zooming or whatever it is with the kids, I, that I think would be tremendously impactful to help them feel that community. Not just through being doing the same things, but seeing each other, if mm -hmm. that's possible. Um, I think, um, yeah, so thank you for all the work that you're doing, and I really uh, 
think that uh, we'll get through this. And thank you. Mr. Beach. Um, obviously, thank you. Really, really appreciate the way you attack the priorities and the safety and security of food and how it all has to go from here to there. Um, I really, I've, I've seen a few of those data dumps websites from mm. other districts, and I think that that, that Way is going to be so much more effective. I think being able to go in and say, okay, this week, this is my syllabus as you described it, um, and much more effective and more useful, I think, for parents and children. Thank um, you. Santa, just keep up the good work. Let us know if you need to. Thanks. Sleep. Sleep. Um, I want to just <laughs> excuse me, piggyback on everybody that's already spoke. Um, thank you all for all your hard work. I mean, it's great. Um, I think the resources are really important and instead of focusing on kids learning right now, they have to focus on what's really going on and that's, that's huge. Um, just be safe, take one day at a time. Don't kind of like, you know, I'm getting upset because I'm like, I'm feeling emotional right now. Um, but I think that um, just take it one day at a time is, is huge. And, you know, be safe, God bless everybody and let me know if you need anything. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you, you said it a couple times that it felt feels like the week's been a year or it's been two years, and I've used that expression actually quite a few times in the last couple of days in my work as well. Um, so I guess what I'll say about this whole thing is, you know, first of all, thanks everything that you presented today. It's a, it's a you know a testament to this district about how how um, you know, truly resilient and great you all are and the folks that work here are, that we've made a complete shift in, in just the whole way we do everything. And we're gonna move into next week and we're gonna keep going and kids are gonna have opportunities and people are gonna be able to stay connected. You know, this is just such an unprecedented thing. And, um, you know, I think, you know, being patient, being open, I mean, appreciating the willingness of everybody, it sounds like on the staff, to just embrace what it is that's, that's kind of happening, taking, you know, opportunities to provide a chance to, the perfect chance to innovate and to really, um, to really shine as we move forward. I think um, it's, it's tremendous. Um, last, so last Friday, as this is kind of all starting to ramp up, I, last Friday night, I, posted something and I, you know, I really feel like this is the opportunity um, to really be able to show how good we really are and I think <coughs> people are really rising to that occasion, both in the context of our work but in the context of our community and I think we have, a, you know, I, I see more people out and walking and being friendly and just trying to make sure that the connection is made even though you're across the street. I think. You know this effort to to just um, you know be open, try our best to be still, take it one day as, in, at a time, and to just truly show the goodness that we all have. This is giving us a chance to do that in ways that we never ever could have imagined. And so keep it up. Know that we're here to be supportive of you guys, and and how much we appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you, guys. Um, I you know I think you know the. Powers and said, you know, I, I certainly haven't rushed to, to get my kids onto um, an educational website or anything. Um, we're certainly not the first generation to have to go through something. Um, as Dr. Baldwin mentioned, the uh, Spanish flu occurred in 1918. I'm serious. And he was there, and, it's, and it was his fault. <laughs> sent overseas and, you know, in Korea, Vietnam. Um, there's been a lot of things that this country has gone through. Um, you know, we have 9-11, um, where actually when our seniors were born now, um, and now they're you know, seniors in high school. So um, we've faced adversity before, and we will still be here when this is over. Um, and I think, in my mind, at least as a parent, um, as leaders, the, the greatest thing that we can teach our children right now is what to do in the face of adversity. Mm -hmm. And it's not to fall apart, it's not to, you can fall apart, just do it in the bathroom. <laughs> um, 
you know, um, keep your game face on, um, be there for them, um, because that's what they need right now. They need a calm during the storm. And so, as a father, that's, that's my thoughts for the public, is just stay the course, um, and we'll get through this together. And we're all here for each other. Um, and I, I can't thank you guys enough. So, Dr. Baldwin. So, um, you know, to lead is to serve. Our job is to serve the greater good. Um, we will make a thousand mistakes, but it won't be that our best intentions to um, deal with our people first comes first. And I think people need to trust us, um, and I hope they do, um, that we're gonna make a thousand mistakes, but um, we got this. We got this. We, we, we will be okay. Um, and I guess I'll leave it with something that Mr. Bueno, I wrote it down. Um, I have behind, so you talk about the generations, I have behind my desk in my office something that was, um, I think it was my father's grandmother or my father's mother, but I think it was his grandmother, which means these are the dates and times you're talking about. And somehow I got it from the, their house and passed on to me, and it's the darn most true thing you'd ever want to have. And these guys know what it is, because I say it seven times a week. But it says, today is the tomorrow that worried you yesterday, and all is well. And um, yeah, we'll be worried, and we'll have anxiety, and we'll have stuff that goes on. And someday we'll look back at this, and we're going to say, and all is well. So we got this. Um, our best intentions are the right things. We're going to make a thousand and one mistakes. Um, but soon, not tomorrow, the next day, all will be well. And I think if we just all know that and do what's right, um, we're going to be fine. And there's a very good chance we'll be uh, not together at our next meeting. Um, and that's okay. It'll probably be fun to look forward to seeing each other and the job that, that this crew has done. Uh, no, we've really learned that people can take pictures with backgrounds. There's all kinds of things you can do on this. I, I've learned. Um, but um, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. And um, hopefully someday our kids say, remember that time? It was pretty funky, but um, I think I'm a little better for it because I learned what's most important in life. Um, and it's not all the things, it's the people. And so that's what we're gonna focus on. So you guys were amazing. Um, our tech crew and, and uh, to pull that off. And Nikki Potter, first thing, my people are coming in and we're gonna get this done. And Derek from the, the town <laughs> side. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. Well, well, the other thing is I was in this, I've been here 15 years and you know, longer than Hector was a pup or whatever one of our future <laughs> past members said, but we also have a relationship with the town now that never existed. It's like one. Uh, so when you go to a meeting with the town, it's a meeting with your school department. And for the longest time, we were the ones that were the ugly stepsister. And we really didn't, never wanted to be, and we really never were. And now with our town, it's one unit, and I think it functions a lot better that way. So um, I give kudos to, to Mr. Reese through all this, and, and consultation, and our, our town uh, leaders. And um, we got this. We'll be all right, but um, it could be a little bumpy before we get there, but we'll be fine. So, thank you guys for everything and um, stay safe. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>